All right, we're starting our unit on systems of equations and inequalities. In Algebra 1, we only focus on linear systems, but I think the more important question is, what is a system? So a system is when we have, in Algebra 1, it's when we have two lines, and we're looking at how they interact. Do they cross? Do they never cross? Do they always cross? This should sound familiar to you because this should sound like one solution, no solution, and then infinitely many infinitely many solutions, okay? So that's what you should be hearing, and that should be familiar to you. We've actually included those notes in your note packet so that you have them. And I've also got converting from standard form into slope intercept form notes in your packet, okay? So that's what a system is. In, we're going to learn two different types. We're going to learn systems of inequalities and systems of equations. We're going to spend very little time on systems of inequalities because all we have to be able to do is find the solution to a system of inequalities by graphing. For equations, though, linear equations, we have a lot more methods we have to learn. Now, before you go, oh my gosh, why do we have to learn so many methods? We're learning a bunch of methods because we want to make sure we use the right one at the right time. We want to use the right tool for the job, the, tool, the, job, the one that actually gets us the answer fastest. So that's always our goal is to get the, get the most accurate answer in the, in the fastest amount of time. Okay, so again, like I said, we're going to start with linear inequalities because it's shortest and it's just graphing, and then we'll move into graphing systems of equations. And again, in Algebra 1, we only focus on linear systems, and we only deal with two equations. You'll start to deal with more equations and more variables when you get into Algebra 2. All right, so again, we have slope-intercept notes, and we have one solution, no solution, infinitely many. So we're going to start with systems of inequalities. So with systems of inequalities, the, so the solution to a system of inequalities is the shaded area that satisfies both, whoops, I'm going to use red, both inequalities, okay? So here's how this is going to work. When we have the, a system, so I've given you this system. Now, it happens that we've already graphed it. It's already graphed for you, but we have this system. So these are the two equations, okay? So we're going to highlight each equation a different color. Now, what I would suggest is if you have them, two highlighters that when you put them together, they make another color. It's fun and also useful. So, like, if you use, like, orange and pink, it's not really going to be that different. So when you highlight them, you're going to have like orange, pink, and orangey pink, okay? But this, when you put the pink and the, pink and the yellow together, they make orange. So just try to make them a little bit different if you can, all right? So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use orange and, I'm sorry, uh, pink and yellow, okay? So the first inequality, I happen to have my pink pen, so I'm going to use that one first y equals one half x, negative one half x plus two. Okay, what I know about inequalities and equations is that if the slope is negative, the line's going downhill. The slope on this one is positive, so it's going uphill. So I know that this one has to be the one that's, that's the y um, less than negative one half x plus two. So that's the first, I'm gonna highlight the equation, then I'm gonna highlight that, I'm gonna shade it that color, okay? So I'm going to sh uh, shade it. And again, you may take as much time shading as you want. Um, I am a huge fan of shading it all because, again, it's kind of like a, like a little freebie coloring break. And I'm about that life. Okay? So that's my first inequality highlighted. All right, now I'm going to take my other color because, remember, we're highlighting the thing about we're going to graph these two right on top of each other. We're going to graph one inequality. We're going to put the other inequality right on top of it. And I'm looking for something that satisfies both of those inequalities. So this is my first inequality, less than 1 half x plus 2. Now I'm going to highlight y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 6. So I'm going to write, so we graphed it right on top, and now I'm highlighting it. Okay, so, okay, well, that, let's, let's go the other way because this is, we've got a whole smearing situation happening here. Mental note, if you're using yellow, use yellow first because it gets a little smeary. Okay. So, what hopefully you notice is I've got the yellow one, where the yellow one and the pink one overlap, I have orange. I'm looking for points in the orange area, okay? Now remember, points on a dashed line like we have for negative one-half x plus two, those points are not part of the solution set of negative one-half x plus two because those points are, are the equal. The ones that say equal, that's the line. This one doesn't say equal, so the points on the line don't count. This one, though, the points on the line do count because it says or equal to, so the points on the line count. 
So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to take these 15 points. You're going to pause or the video is going to pause for you. You're going to take these 15 points and you're going to plot them. Okay, you're going to plot them in um, the shaded area. You're going to plot them on the grid and you're going to start putting them in the areas that they were. So if it's in the double shaded area or on a solid line in the double shaded area, then it works for both. If it's not in the double shaded area, but it's in one of them, so like maybe it's on the line here, but it's not in the pink area, or it's up here in the yellow area, then it works for one, but that's not what we want. Or maybe it doesn't work for either one of them. Maybe it's on this double, on this line here, and it's over, or over here. These don't work for either one of them, okay? So I want you to take, take however long it takes, sort them. All right, this is what I got when I did them. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to highlight the ones. So these were actually in both areas. So they worked for both equations, which is why I'm highlighting them with both markers. Okay, now these here, negative 8, 8, 1, 2, and 7, 8, and 0, 2 actually, only worked in the yellow shaded area. Now, 0, 2 was a little tricky here because 0, 2 is on the dashed line. But remember, that dashed line is, does not put it into the double shaded area. The dashed line, I can't use that point, so it's only in the yellow area. Okay. Um, now, 4, negative 2 and 5, 1 were in the yellow area. Now, these over here, they don't work for anything. Okay, so they, they were out here. Um, and this one right up here, by the way, 7, 8 was close, but it was just inside the yellow area. Um, so again, what we're looking for is we don't want them to work for one. We don't work, want them to work for none. We want them to work for both. They have to be in both areas for them to satisfy the inequalities. Now, that's one way we can do it. Okay, another way that we can do this is, so let's pretend they don't give me a graph. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to graph this. You can also, what you can also do is you can take one of those inequalities and plug it into both equations. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that over here. I'm going to show you two different ways on the next page how to do that. Okay, so this time, instead of solving it by, instead of, instead of having a graph already there, we're going to have to graph this graph ourselves. Okay. Now, for this first one, again, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before, okay? Except this time, I'm going to use my uh, yellow highlighter first so I don't get it all. I mean, again, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful ombre, but I don't need to be doing that to my highlighter, okay? So I'm going to start by graphing this first inequality, all right? The first inequality is y equals 2x plus 1. So remember, when we graphed the inequalities last time, we had to know three things. We had to know m, we had to know b, we had to know where to shade and what kind of line. Okay, so my slope is 2, my y-intercept is 1, it's greater than, so I shade above, and the line is solid because it's or equal to. Okay, so I'm going to plot this line at um, at, I'm going to plot that line. I want you to pause and plot that line too. All right, this is what your first graph should look like. All right, this is what your first graph should look like. I mean, hopefully. Yes, that's what it should look like, definitely. And remember, because it's or equal to, it should have a solid boundary line and it should be shaded above. Remember, when we're trying to figure out if we're shading above or below, we, put, we, we graph our line. We put our pen on one point. If it's above, we draw an arrow up. If it's below, we draw an arrow down. Since we're shading above, we drew our arrow up. All right. Now, for this second one here, we were able to do that shade above, shade below stuff because we had this, um, because it was in slope intercept form, but this one's not in slope intercept form. So you have choices here, okay? I don't really care how you plot the line. We can convert it or you can use the cover-up method, okay? You still got to figure out how you're going to shade. And we talked about that in the last unit. You know, if you need to, you can go review some of those videos. But I'm going to do algebraic conversion. 
So what I want you to do is, I, because it's good practice, I want y'all to practice converting this into slope intercept form. Go ahead and pause, and then when you get back, we'll see if we both got the same answer. Let's go ahead and take five, take, take, just pause. Okay, so just to walk you back through it again, it's good practice. Remember what we're going to do, our do undo method says we need to figure out what we did to the y. I multiplied it by 2 and then added 3x. So I'm going to subtract, well, I'm going to subtract 3x and divide by 2. Okay, I'm going to do that to both sides. Remember, I cannot subtract 3x from 8. I can't say 8 minus 3 is 5 because that means I got eight children and I'm missing three buses. Can I take away that? What does that mean? It means I got eight children minus and missing three buses. I can't put those things together. I don't have like five missing bus children, okay? So the 2y comes straight down. Remember, I don't have to bring down that plus sign because the plus sign here, because it's positive. If it was minus 2y, then I'd have to bring the plus sign down. Okay, now I'm gonna divide both sides by two and I get y less than, look, you see me almost do that equal sign? Mm-hmm, that's, okay, I'm gonna erase that because somebody's gonna be like, what was that weird pointy e thing you did? Less than, negative three divided by two is negative three half x, eight divided by two is four. Now, if you put negative 1.5, it's not wrong, but I'm gonna leave it as negative three halves because the whole point of me doing this is so that I can graph it. And I don't wanna graph you know, up one and a half over, uh, 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 no. I want it to be in fraction form because I want to do whole number points, okay? So again, I still got to know what's my slope? What's my intercept, my y-intercept? Where do I shade? And where, um, what kind of line do I have, okay? Well, my slope is negative three over two, so negative three rise, two run. My y-intercept is four. Since this is less than, I'm going to shade below, and it's not or equal to, so it's going to be dashed. All right? I want you guys to take a minute, graph that thing, shade it. Let's see if we get the same thing. Oh, my God, you guys. Look how pretty that orange is. Look at it. Pink and yellow made orange. Okay, y'all don't care, but whatever. Anyway, so... This is what your inequality should look like. Now, from here, I should be able to tell where, like, so, like, let's say they say, is 0, 0 part of the solution set? Well, I can look. Yep, 0, 0 is not in the double shaded area, so no, that's not going to work. What about 0, 1? Well, 0, 1 is on a solid line near the double, you know, bordering the shaded area, so this one is part of my solution set. Now, there's a whole other strategy you can use also. That strategy is called substitution. So what if I said to you, is the point uh, 1, negative 2? Is that point in the solution set? Now, we can go over 1, down 2 and see that it is not because it's not in the double shaded area and it's not on a solid line bordering the double shaded area. But what if they just gave me these two equations and no graph and I'm not trying to graph this whole thing? All right. Well, what I could do is I could take those uh, x and y value and I could plug them into this equation. So I have y greater than or equal to 2x plus 1. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. I'm going to plug this x and y in. So y is negative 2, 2 times 1 plus 1. Negative 2 greater than or equal to 2 plus 1, which is 3. Is negative 2 greater than or equal to 3? No. So even if it works for this other one, which let's just check, 3 times oh, 3x, okay, the lights just went off in my room, hang on a second, plus, let's pause, for, oh, there we go, 3x plus 2y less than 8, so 3 times 1 plus 2 times negative 2 less than 8. That's 3 minus 4, which is negative 1 less than 8. That one's true, but it doesn't matter because this one's not. 
It's got to be true for both of them. This is a really good strategy when they give you a system like this and say, hey, which of these points work? I can just plug them into both equations and see if they make it true. And we can try that with a bunch of, a bunch of points. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three points, and I want you to test them and tell me if they're true. So um, I will, those will be your next three questions. You're going to test them and tell me if they're true. If you have any other questions, I need you to take notes on those questions and write them down. <laughs>